Anybody hear that? I'm fairly alarmed here. Come on, come on, come on. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. Now, now, right now. We are not brothers. It's time. You know, it's interesting. For many years now, I've I've had a complaint about the failure of Catholics to really produce good movies, good films, because I do believe the cinema is a powerful tool. You know, Lord knows the devil has utilized it to such a degree in modern times that he's been able uh, to really be a, a bad influence in modernity, I guess you could say, by using the cinema, you know, the art of the cinema. And while we Catholics have a great history with our visual arts, our paintings, our sculptures, our statues through the centuries, um, the cinema is something I think that we've lacked to capture and to use to enhance those senses. And maybe because it is a, a modern concoction that's been so distorted by modernity, maybe we're afraid um, to go in that route in many ways. But I think it is interesting in the sense that I think um, Catholics, I don't think, have utilized it enough. That's just my opinion. I wish we would. I know the Protestants have tried to utilize cinema for a long time. And, um, you know, listen, I give the Protestants credit to a certain degree um, that they go out and make the films and get their message out. But their storylines are cheesy. Their storylines are very uh, overly simplistic uh, to such a degree that I think they patronize um, when they're you know, trying to evangelize using movies. I think their films come off excessively silly oftentimes. And I think a part of it has to do because they have nothing else, really, uh, to to appeal to the senses when you go down um, the path of faith alone. And ultimately this simplistic intellectual consent that is all that is needed within the framework of their weak theology and, uh, you know, one of the things about the Catholic cinema that I would notice was, I, you know, I tend to go down these rabbit holes every once in a while where I pick up on a topic that I'm interested in, whether it's history, whether it's, you know, geography, whether it's uh, politics or even things like nature and things like that. And I tend to go down these rabbit holes and do a comprehensive study. One of the things that I did recently was I went down the rabbit hole on the um, operations of Our Lady in Garibandal. I didn't know much about it. I... I kind of had looked at it a few years back, but I went down this rabbit hole to do some research on it, and I find Garibandal very interesting. I know it's not church approved, but I still find it very interesting and fascinating, some, some little stories in there and things like that, and I decided to watch a movie on Garibandal just to kind of get a, a bigger feel for it and how it would be portrayed in the cinema, and while the movie was okay, it was very simplistic. Um, a bad script, uh, bad acting, and it just, you know, this was probably about two, three nights ago that I watched this, and it just reminded me how poor as Catholics we've been to utilize that cinema. And that movie, while I, I watched all of it and I appreciated it for what it was, I thought it, the script could have been done much, much better. And so not to let my, my faith in sort of uh, Catholic, you know, cinema go to a, a complete waste. Uh, tonight, um, I sat down with the wife and we were looking for something to watch, to stream in tonight and um, kind of going through Hulu and nothing but bad stuff on there. We avoid all the bad stuff on there and things like that. And my wife says, hey, you know, let's go over to uh, Amazon. They got lots of religious movies there. And um, we found a movie on Amazon called Padre Pew. It was... Uh, it came out in the year 2000. It's rated PG-13, 2 hours and 37 minutes. And the description here from Amazon, quote, The poor Italian peasant, boy Francesco, already had visions of Jesus and Mary as a child, but the devil visits him too. He, Francesco, is quite certain that he would become a priest. After entering the uh, Capuchin order, it becomes clear that Padre Pugh has powers 
which cannot be explained rationally. He heals the sick, knows the names, problems, and the future of complete strangers, end quote. And you know, with movies on secular media outlets like Amazon, I'm always a little skeptical. In fact, the film we saw on Gary Bendal about three nights ago was also on Amazon, and you can find that there. But I got to tell you, as much as I was disappointed on the film that was done by or at least on Garibandal, which was in Spanish with subtitles, I was so pleasantly surprised on this Padre Pew movie that I found. Um, no, 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 no. It's much more than pleasantly surprised. My soul was moved by this movie to such a degree that I had tears in my eyes at the end. Because it really does go through the life of Padre Pew and many of the stories that we've heard, his personal sufferings, the persecution by the church, his ability to tell complete strangers and read their souls, and his devotion and love to God, and his humbleness, his meekness, and his ability to always praise God. And even when this celebrity-like status begins to flourish in Italy, over Padre Pew, he goes outside and he just, like our Lord, when he kind of whips out the money changers, he whipped out the money changers that were starting to glorify him in that sense. Because to Padre Pew, whatever special gifts and whatever special graces he had, he understood that it was not by his power, but the power of Christ Almighty that used him as a great saint. Um, the film is very well done. It's very personal. It's very emotional. And it's funny because I'm looking at my wife. I said, look at this story. Look how deeply personal they get with the faith itself. Talking about not only just personal sin, but the, the, the ideas of humbleness and not being conceited and, and searching for truth and justice in the way Christ revealed it, not only through his church, but also through sort of this kind of... Um, you know, this kind of basis of truth that we Catholics have always known is not an abstract idea. You just don't see films like that within, you know, sort of our secular modern culture anymore that tries to make God as abstract as they can because we never want to delve into personal sin because there's always that confliction between the concepts of sort of modern liberty and sort of that old world Catholic faith that this film really... Um, tries to touch on. And I got to tell you, I was stunned by the power of this film as you go through the life of Padre Pew and all the challenges that he faced. And, and um, you know, it, it begins really all, as an old man, as he's facing imminent death, as, you know, his time is coming, it's 1967. And even to the point of to death, he's being persecuted by church leaders who have trouble with sort of the gifts that God has given him, or at least that God has displayed through him, whether it's the stigmata, whether it's the ability to read people's souls, whether it's even that ability to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in two different places at the same time is one of those gifts. I forgot what it's called. Um, but, but, but there's a lot to Padre Pew and, um, it actually begins with Padre Pew having an oxygen mask because one of the things that he suffered was from was some uh, some breathing problems. And um, he was suffering mightily for the Lord toward the end of his life, as it, it, you know, as his life was coming to an end, effectively speaking. And even at the moment of death, when, you know, it's on the, I guess, on the horizon for him to go to be with our Lord, the church is still persecuting, asking him, to basically admit that he was a liar, that the stigmata was a lie, that the miracles, the gifts uh, that that he shared with the world, that the fan base they created, that it was all a lie. They wanted him to confess those sins at the very end. And it's the actor, or at least the storyline, and the actor himself who plays Padre Pew, um, I don't know what his name is here. Um, uh, he does a, a masterful job in really controlling the screen, the camera, to, to sort of capture your mind, your heart, and your soul. The movie 
I got to tell you, we just got done watching about 10 minutes ago, and it's an inspiration to me, and my soul has been lifted by watching this film um, like it hasn't, you know, like it hasn't been in a long time. Now, listen, I, listen, I'm not a, uh, a biographer on Padre Pew. I know a lot about him. I'm Italian. We have a devotion to him here at the house, and maybe somebody will watch the film and pick some things apart about the film that maybe they took some artistic liberties. I don't know. But all I can tell you is that the film makers and creators tried to stay true really to the story of Padre Pew. Whether they got all the details right, I can't confirm that. But they do touch on a lot of the issues of who Padre Pew was and the things he did in his life and the sufferings. The stories of being attacked by demons constantly. The devil always trying to get him to renounce his faith. At one point tempting him to take advantage of a of a young lady that he befriended to, to, to break his vow of chastity. The stories that I've heard, at least a part of you, of the physical attacks of the demons in his own home, in his in his cell. That's an, another thing that they portray in the film. His ability to read souls in the sins of others, knowing the sins of others before they confessed them. And, and really being a hardliner when he had to be, but also showed love and compassion to those that needed love and compassion at the same time. You know? Um, you know, kind of like the carrot and the stick. You know, what does that soul need right now? Does he need the, the, the carrot or does he need a kick in the butt? And ironically enough, there's a moment where a guy gets a kick in the butt in the movie who deserved it. But at the same time, he was a very compassionate, loving, and caring friar, priest that loved our Lord and loved to save souls. Loved his ability to say the Mass and to hear confessions. Um, I, I'm just... Padre Pew, I mean, one of the subtitles here, is he the greatest saint of the 20th century? Listen, I'll let the theologians discuss that. But certainly the role that Padre Pew played in the 20th century, particularly in Italy, dealing with the poor, eventually setting up a hospital after the war, that was one of the more touching moments, too, because it showed World War II breaking out and Padre Pew figuring out, we're going to have a lot of wounded people, a lot of malformed people coming back from the world. Let's set up a hospital here in, um, you know, in, in, in St. Giovanni Retondo, where, of course, he had his, you know, lived out the rest of his life. And he saw a man of great compassion and love for Christ. And even at the end, as he's being persecuted, um, he would not renounce anything that of what he did. Because in his mind, it was really the Lord that worked through him. And his devotion and love to Our Lady, his love and devotion to Christ as King, um, it, it comes out in a way in this movie that you just don't see in this culture of pluralistic indifferentism um, that, that we live in today in our society. You just don't get into the, into the details of the personal sins um, because in many ways our pluralistic society has done away with sin and God himself has become an abstract idea. This movie, this film here will change your mind. It really goes deep into the love and sort of the realness of what the Catholic faith is and how it is supposed to be practiced at such a deep personal level of faith. The movie was just really that well done. It was not a cheesy religious movie like you see oftentimes. It really touches the senses and the emotions and the beauty of the faith, the way the Catholic faith is supposed to be practiced. Yes, the movie takes itself very seriously, which I like as well too, because these are serious things. These are serious times here that we're living in. And to look up to great saints like Padre Pew, we should all have a statue an icon, an image of uh, Padre Pew and have our uh, our devotions to uh, a great saint of our time. And I think what's interesting about Padre Pew, and I'll close with this, is that, you know, we all have our devotions to the saints, whether it's, you know, my family, St. Joseph, and then we've heard of other saints like Thomas Aquinas and St. Catherine of Siena and... Uh, you know, just go down the list of St. Therese or St. Teresa. But when we look at these saints and we try to kind of reflect back on these saints, we the only images we really have are those stories of history. 
we have sort of these, you know, I don't want to say cartoonish, but, you know, we have images of them, whether it's through paintings or whether it's through our holy cards. Um, there are saints that we never really saw or heard or walked the earth. But what makes Padre Pio special was he was a modern saint. He was filmed. You could see him. In fact, I think he, I've seen his mass was recorded and put on YouTube. To be able to feel and see and hear audibly with the senses a saint where technology was able to grab him, I think puts Padre Pew at a level that makes him very special. I'm not trying to diminish the other great saints. I'm, I'm not even saying Padre Pew is better than those saints. Lord knows the great Saint Joseph, who we and my family have a great devotion to. Apart from our Lord, of course, the Trinity and Our Lady, there is nobody greater in my book than the foster father of Jesus. But what I'm saying to you is, is that there is an opportunity with Padre Pew to see a saint in sort of, in his own human flesh, in his own fallen human nature. And that's one of the things about the movie that's impressive was that he was a fallen man who made many mistakes, but it was through the power of Christ that elevated him to what he became. And that is an inspiration for the faith. Again, Padre Pew, he has a special place in my heart, not just because I'm Italian, but again, because it's something we could see, feel, and in some ways touch, I guess you could say. So Padre Pew is the name of the film on Amazon. I Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm going to give it five out of five stars. That's how impressed I was with this movie. And in a day and age where I believe Catholics have failed to utilize on the cinema in a lot of different ways. And I'm, listen, I'm not bashing all Catholic films. I'm not doing that, please. What I'm saying is, is that, you know, I mean, listen, we had The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson. And, and we've had some good ones. But oftentimes, I don't think we take the seriousness of the saints and their lives and their struggles that they had to deal with. We, we make them... You know, out to be superheroes oftentimes, kind of like watching Spider-Man or Batman. And that's not what the saints are. They were real people with fallible natures that struggled and suffered just as much as you and I do on a daily basis. And this movie touches on all the struggles of Padre Pio. He wasn't a perfect man. I, I think oftentimes when we say, well, he's a saint, St. Padre Pio, he must have been perfect. No, quite the contrary. I think it goes back to kind of, you know, sort of the analogy that we oftentimes use to defend the papacy where, you know, listen, Jesus picked one of the weakest apostles to be his pope. Peter denied him three times. Peter ran away at the crucifixion in many ways. You see a lot of that in Padre Pio's life where he failed many times, but he kept picking himself up and kept coming back. And even while he was being persecuted by those within the church, he never lost his faith. He did the will of our Lord. It's a beautiful film. It's on Amazon, Padre Pew. It was made in the year 2000, PG-13. If you got Amazon Prime, please, five out of five stars. I was impressed. I was touched. So was the wife. Listen, we had a tear in our eye at the end of it. Okay? The movie's done in Italian, but you can put on subtitles. And I think it's well worth the two and a half hour watch. I mean, it's 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 very impressive. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll leave a link here in the description box. You will need to subscribe to Amazon Prime. I'm not sure if you can find that on YouTube. I mean, the movie is now uh, 20 years old. Maybe there's other outlets. I don't know. It's just an inspiration. I enjoyed it. I wanted to share it with you guys here, our audience at the Knights of Christendom. So there you have it. This is Frank signing off. Talk to you later, guys.